it doesn't mean shit, as in my case, you can't prove it, but in your case, the whole of it, because it's all merged together. Um, so yeah, all of that is unfair to liability for the charge. So that would be my assumption, and I'm sure that is correct. Can I take you back to the first question about PCC membership? Uh, at least one of my little village PCCs, it is perfectly possible that all elected members of the PCC are actually going to be affected by this and therefore need to withdraw from the decision making process. Which we <laughs> how, how would that be handled? I think we'd have to take legal advice, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 do not, I do not know. I do know that it's one or two people. But when you drift it to in chorus, which is a question I've been asked a couple of times, is actually I do not know we need to ask them. But it, I think in that case you might, you might end up having to decide that you can't register the land. But you need to we certainly need to speak to legal advice and speak to the charity commissioners as well. So I recommend two things. You took a speak to your registrar and you also speak to the charity commissioners probably after that as well, see what they say. It's probably an issue they haven't thought about yet. But the, Charities, after being very opaque about the advice they were given, very opaque, and indeed um, they actually rejected several um, parishes who wanted to not register the against their mates. Um, um, they're now accepting things that were rejected a while ago, so it seems to be. I would definitely take legal advice, but also speak to the charity commissioners. They're very, I think, uh, they'll begin to be aware of the difficulties of this issue. Not being to put the registrar on the spot, but. Uh, the registrar there, she's beautiful, she'll know the answer. The same card is going to be uh, answered up later. Can, can I just ask whether you're being too carried away with asking us all to pursue this so rigorously because you enjoy maps and I see it working in different places? Uh, we're only pursuing this, taking an ancient writing and reassessing it because we're frightened of English heritage not making grants, and we're frightened of PCCs being if prosecuted. Could I urge that the reputational damage clause is much more uh, promoted? Yeah, I agree. Um, I, I, I see I'm pretty bland. I've killed it. <laughs> <laughs> I tried. I, I think I think the issue is that I think I've, have I killed have I killed PCC would have to write their own case. The PCC is where the buck stops. The reputation of damage is an argument that I would say the majority of churches are using, I've come across, but not all. And I, I'm not the, here to tell you what is the right decision for your PCC. And if you, if you want to do the reputation of damage approach, that is absolutely fine by me. Um, I, I'm actually going to my PCC a, a, on in a few weeks' time, to say these are the two options we have. We have to have one very large landowner, or we could go the reputational damage route. And I, I'm, I cannot, it's up to the, each individual PCC. All is quite clear is you have to investigate what your liabilities are, what you're losing, and what your decision is. You do have to investigate it, um, but you don't. Um, Particularly if you discover that actually if you followed the liability, you'd find the church commissioners or the government or the MOD would carry out the work. So you've effectively, a PCC could have effectively decided to forego um, several hundreds of thousands of pounds of assets. Uh, but obviously if Mr Smith, Joe Bloggs and, and all the PCC are liable, you might decide that's not the way forward. So I would say each PCC 
have to make their own decision about which is the best way forward. They might decide they don't want to enforce the liability against um, a large landowner for whatever reason. Um, and that's the decision of the PCC. That's up to your diocese, really. I don't know whether it would help you or not. I know the charity commissioners are accepting individuals quite happily um, with their own particular reason for not doing it. But you could use that. I don't think it would actually... I, uh, to be honest, I do not think it would make the jottest bit of difference to the charity commissioners where you created that evidence or not. And my concern would be that you'd be wasting an awful lot of time and actually not making any difference at all as far as the charity commissioners are concerned. But that's up to your diocese. That would be my only concern, really. Um, we've been told that 50% um, of our um, market... Oh, yeah. 50. Sorry, the, the microphone system's down and it will be brought up again as soon as possible. Uh, we've been told that 50% of our liability is with the church commissioners. The rest we still have to look into, but we think it will be very small amounts of, of lots of different people. Can we just register half the church commissioners' bid? and then make a case for not doing the other half. Right, the 50% the 50 is that under the record of ascertainment? I'm not sure. I just spoke to somebody at the diocese, and they told us that 50% of our liability was well, not the church. We have life. <laughs> <laughs> um, the question was, they've done 50% of our liability is how well the church commissions. Well, the reality is, is if it's 50%, it's under the record of ascertainment. Um, because, because if it's any other form of liability, it's 100 percent So the um, the other you have to investigate, but it's possible that there's land merged with tithes, which was owned by the um, by the dean or the bishop or whatever, and they merged the land and the tithes together at a certain point in history. And it's possible the church commission is actually 100 percent You would need to find out if there was land merged with tithes. So on the record of ascertainment, they might take 50 percent. Under, under land merged with tithes, which was in their hands, which they sold off in 1880, they might end up 100%. Um, I'm not saying that is the case, I have no idea, but that is very that is possibly the case. And would we be able to register just that, if we decided not to register the, the bit that we're not sure about, if we do find out that it's lots of little owners? If it's lots of little owners, can you, we just you, register you, it, 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 Well, if it's land record, if it's record of ascertainment liability, not land based, the church commissioners just accept it and say, hey, God, that's ours. If it's a lot of these landowners, as I hopefully have pointed out, on a financial basis, it costs you so much money, it would cost you an awful lot of money to find each of those little landowners. If there's a thousand pounds of damage to the chancel, it's seven pounds forty-four. And then it costs you twenty-five pounds to send the letter to collect the seven pounds forty-four, whatever it happens to be. So obviously, you work out quite quickly under um, the record of ascertainment liability is, in my opinion, generally almost pointless to pursue it. In my opinion. Although I do know that church that has opted to register all the, um, all the record of ascertainment liability was all owned by one little large landowner. Um, so that's totally up to your individual parish, really. Um, if the church commissioners have paid 100%, for chancellor repairs in the last 20 years. Uh, does this require us to do further evidence? Well, if they've accepted 100%, they've sent your file saying we take 100% liability, then theoretically there might be other people who have liability for your chancellor, but my gut reaction is to people like that saying, don't bother for the chancellor, church commission to take 100%, so therefore it's not worth pursuing. That would be my immediate reaction to that. If it's Eton well, College, you take 100%. Well, do I need more than the evidence that they've paid the bill? Um, you need a record of ascertainments or whatever it is. That, what, under the, you need to find out under what basis they're paying the like, what, under what basis it is. But I think, find out why they're doing it, and that's probably it. So, right, 
why do you change the bishop? The, the church commissioners have sent um, all the churches that they have liability for, or the, all the churches they think that they have liability for, um, to me, and I have those records, and they are getting sent out within the next week to all the parishes. Um, obviously, the majority of the parish parishes, um, there are some changes. Um, there's one instance where the parish uh, had 100% liability with the church commissioners, which is now 14%. Uh, because they sold the land in the 1960s uh, and carried on paying 100% but didn't realise. So there are some changes in there, but the majority have remained the same. So if you send me an email, I can reply with the information straight away. The definition of chancellor is rather obscure. <laughs> it is I assume the original concept was for church repair. Under modern um, thinking, could you also now include the church hall and any other area that the numbers might work in? No, it doesn't mean it's a chance at all. It's interesting, until the 1923 dilapidations measure, uh, um, the late the proprietor was technically liable for the entire church, but the lay people did the name relief of the lay, uh, um, did the relief um, for him to go up. It's distinctly the chance for the vicar going to business with the choir and, and, uh, and the altar. That's really quite clear, that's where it is. believed 
that it was not anything to do with the building as such per se. It was due to who collected the tithes. So they get fired. The only thing is, if you built a, a new chancel, the new chancel can't be bigger than the old chancel unless the impropriety is our building. And so the improprietor, so if you had a little chance on, you build a massive chance on, the improprietor said, I don't want that, thank you very much. He would only be responsible for the percentage of the original one. So it was 50% bigger. But if you relocate it, as far as the Tide Commission is concerned, the chance is now just very small, wherever the altar is, just above the altar. That was their opinion. <coughs> Not everybody agrees with him. Not everybody agrees with the Tide Commission, because I asked this question to the to the church commissioners, and they just sent me some papers from the time commission that they answer was nobody really knows that this is the best authority there is. <coughs> it is, like all these things, it is a mystery wrapped in an Indian or something. Uh, but in name, I thought it was a cheap way to get out of I know one church, which they actually, the, the proprietor deliberately knocked down the entire church to get out of the proprietor liability and built a new one without the chancel. But unfortunately, as far as the time commission was concerned, he's, he, yeah, he still carries on the liability. Mm. And that particular church of, um, is in the middle of writing a note to say they don't want to put the liability on the land. So, under the ground, I think it was huge to have the extinguished and that it's unfair to reignite it. But that's their decision. Um. <coughs> Canon uh, Mullins' question, which uh, uh, he put while the, uh, the sound system was down, is about the, the reputational damage to the church and the cross Lincolnshire, and whether the, the Diocese of Lincoln can do anything to uh, help parishes in, in this matter. The point has been made that, of course, each parish is, uh, has an individual responsibility under the law for this, but I will undertake to. Um, convey Canon Mullins concerns to the, the Diocesan Council and whilst obviously I have to make their commitment, um, we will certainly ask the Diocesan Council to see what we can do, if anything, to um, deal with this matter of the, the reputational damage to the Church of England across, across Lincolnshire. So um, Canon Mullins, thank you for the point. I think that's all that we can say on that at the moment, but we will, um, I will take it to the Diocesan Council. <coughs> Can I ask a question please for uh, clarification? Uh, we've got here the uh, record of ascertainment and thank you for, uh, for the people who put that together for us. It appears to cover a very small area of land and I'm fairly sure that the tithe um, records, the enclosure records show a large area of land. Um, how would the liability be apportioned between the apportioned liabilities and the non-apportioned liabilities? Right. Um, well, that, that's a great mystery. Uh, basically, um, <coughs> what would happen is if you registered the apportioned liability and the non-apportioned liability, <coughs> the several liability, um, <coughs> what you could do is send the bill to the person who owned the, the non-apportioned liability and if you've registered the apportioned liability they can say well you actually own uh, you're responsible for 0.2% of this liability and they can have a bit of a big ding dong about how to calculate it out really. Um, the liability do not talk to one another. Um, the, the government, um, there was a 18, 1985 the, the law commission said this is like an absolute pig's ear more or less and, uh, and you know, it's just not to hear. Their recommendation was the government just pay everybody off and just get rid of it, or portion it off to very minuscule amounts. But then realised by portioning off, they're effectively depriving the churches of an asset. And their recommendation was to pay everybody off a nominal sum just to get rid of it. But unfortunately, if you do that, you might deprive some churches of an asset that enjoyed for 100 years where the local college or Eton College or somebody's come along and done their, done their repair, repair, uh, repairs or, or <coughs> Ministry of Defence has done the work. So if I pay it all off um, by a nominal sum, so they, they say, we don't know, the government should do something. And the government has done something. With, the, uh, with the sort of law of unintended consequences causing absolutely headache for everybody in the process. Um, so yeah, they, um, they don't talk to one another. 
In my case, I mean, as I said, I've got lots of different forms of liabilities. I could not register the 60% of portion liability with these hundreds and thousands of acres. But I could register in two or three fields, so this is not a portion stuff easy. Mm -hmm. What is a tax or repair? Is it just for the fabric, or does it include, for example, internal redecoration? Does not internal. Well, that's a very good question. Uh, that is, uh, the, uh, until Aston Pamplo, everybody thought it was wind tight and waterproof, and, uh, but not decoration. After Aston Pamplo, I think the word that you was substantial repair, excluding uh, wind inside decoration. So, uh, so it's actually quite a lot of work. Uh, so it's more wind tight and waterproof. It's substantial repair, but it does not include decoration. Um, so. How you define that is a mystery, um, but that is more or less what the encounter is saying. I've got raised questions here. And what, what's what's the other colour? Yeah, the other colour. Oh, the other colour, I'm sorry. Yeah, the other colour. Red means there, should, there was definitely chance to repair liability in 1887. There is definitely impropriety. You will have to research. There is, if there's not a record, there should be. There will be chance of repair liability issues. It may have been extinguished, but there should be. There was definitely one. Red means you have no choice but to do research. Blue <coughs> means that, um, um, that possibly the liability will rest upon the church commissioners. Is recorded as being a proprietor of that date. But you cannot be certain. In theory, under the uh, 1840 Church Commission, Ecclesiastical Commission Act, they took over all of the preliminaries and all the deans and all the whatever. But not all of them did. Some of them held out. They didn't want to give their money to the Ecclesiastical Commissioners. So, unfortunately, probably if you've got blue, you'll probably find the liability eventually ends up with the Church Commissioners. But as I said, you may have to register the land and the church commissioners to pick it up later. But you will have to do the research for that. If it's green, there would there really shouldn't be any liability at all. Because I'm, I'm listed, because green means you're listed in 1887 as a chapelry to the main church. If you are a chapelry uh, to the main church, the parish church, um, liability does not belong to you. It belongs to the parish church. So if you're green, you can just go and think, you do, you, what you can do, you can, do, you can look at the time apportionment on the web and just see township of X parish, and that's it. Um, None of my parish is actually named on this list. Well, that, that, if you're not named on this list, um, you'll probably find his name on the enclosure list. Um, and the enclosure list means you've got enclosure liability. So, uh, so if, it's not, if it's not on the enclosure list, might mean, and then a lot of the early enclosure awards, there was no map produced. And these are only a list of maps are available. There might be an enclosure award with a description of, beside Mr. Smith's field, beside the oak tree, there are 55 <laughs> acres being given to the lay veteran in lieu of But if you can find that stuff, you are an amazing person. <laughs> I couldn't. Right, um, so I just emphasise that most churches are going the way of reputation damage. We do have to put your own individual case together. And I'm sorry if I didn't emphasise that now. I thought mentioning it first of all was good enough, but obviously not. Um, uh, right, if you have a layer to enjoy in chance of repair like this, can the layer to place reasonable restrictions on the feces, on chance of feces, monuments, events, and other matters, in order to minimise risks and to rationalise any repair necessities? No. Uh, because it wouldn't be responsible for monuments anyway. This is a question that somebody's asked. Um, what firms can be used to carry out research for PCCs? The question is, is the, the, the chance repair line um, research firms, um, you, you need almost several different firms. One to do the um, looking through the tide documentation. Then you need another firm like a surveyor to find out where the land is, and then a solicitor. I personally feel that you can save an awful lot of money looking at your own tithe portions. If you can't do it, the Navy parishes probably do it. Um, so uh, that's what I would recommend. You, there are very few who don't, can't all do it with one firm. And I know one church was speaking to spend 300 quid on employing.
being a person who I could have told for zero pence there was, um, there was no imposal reward. There, there was an imposal reward, but Matt's been lost. So if Matt's been lost, yeah, there might be liability out there, but you couldn't find it. So they charged him 300 quid for that. And so all they, but, so there are various firms who are employing archivists. There are, I haven't linked to any of them, but some locally that do the archive research for you. But there are surveyor firms who look at uh, find the land. And of course, you can go to the register after you go to the register and go to the legal advice. So it's almost like three different areas. If you go to the register, it, uh, you can register it on your own, but you'd probably be better off going to solicitor for peace of mind, if nothing else. Look at the question and lay it to the past, to the current lay it to in the, in the mid 1500s. They to this day maintain the title. Would they be expected to hold all the records and need to register the land? No. Um, the answer is you have to do the evidence search yourself. It's very unlikely that they back to going to say, oh, here's the enclosure wall that proves I'm liable to your chance. And so I'm afraid very, they might hold it, but um, you have to go to the hub for the available records. Um, would it be possible to do a flow chart for the main steps of the research process? Hopefully, although I know the flow charts, um, if you go to uh, my page 23 and 24, um, that, should, um, that should help you. I have to say, this was written initially well before the charity commissioners issued their advice out that um, sort of making things less stressful for the day. So the same possible outcomes are there, except I personally believe that um, that actually option three, the, since the um, is not really viable to arrange to the land and promise never to enforce it, I don't think it's a viable way forward. I think you can either register it or or you opt for the parcel and down it. But until until October, or even November, option three was the best to be forward. Uh, but since we've got the charity advice, uh, so again, yeah, go to page 23 and 24. And then 25 and 26. It's not a flow chart, but it should help you. And if you really want to get into transfer of their liability, you've got complicated. This is the book to get. It's not easy to read, uh, but if you listen to me, you realise how difficult it is to read. Transfer of their liability is James Gerrard. James Gerrard, absolutely. James Gerrard. James Gerrard, why is it the book? It's £9.95 for Amazon. They're going on. What determines whether um, what determines whether it is apportioned or not? The record of ascertainments was a record. How do you merge land and tides? Yeah, it's a question you always ask me. I get emails about this kind of thing. Uh, it's simply in, the, in 1836 when they came through, the person said, "It's ridiculous. I'm paying myself my tides anyway. Why do I want to just?" Pay myself rent time charges, giving from the right hand to the left hand. So you merge the land with the tithes. I just, I am the landowner and the tithe owner. The tithe owner has the liability. Owner of the rectory tithes has the liability. Lord Muck, in 1836, could not have imagined that he would never not own the land. You've got to think, that's what they felt. They were Lord Muck, they're always going to own the land. They were to know that in the 20th century there's going to be death duties that's going to bankrupt them, the land's going to get sold off. So, so they merged the land with the tithes, and so from their perspective, it just saved an awful lot of money in that, and apportionment and all that. From our perspective, uh, it means that that particular slot of land um, bears chance of um, non apportion chance of repair liability. And that only happens because. Basically, the government, when it came to rent tithe, sorted all that out, thought, oh dear, this is far too complicated to sort out, so they just did a bit of it. And that's what the government has done throughout the years, is they've done a bit of it, and actually made it worse quite uh, You've got to remember, it's not the church who's done it, it's Acts of Parliament. We, the church, has never done anything. So it's been closed to all acts of the government, not of the church. It's not our fault. But I, I agree. For everybody, 
far as Joe Blocks who owns the land, they would see it as the church's fault. And raising the liability is formally a neutral thing, but actually, if you're a recipient of it, I would imagine you would consider it a, a very harmful thing. So, so any questions? Yes, uh, just recently we purchased the property in Hall Beach uh, and the solicitor um, recommended that we trade into a policy to ensure against a claim. And now it's a reputable uh, solicitor and uh, we traded with it for many years so we said yes, I think it was 60 or 70 pounds to ensure against trying to research all this looked a good idea. So. Is, was that okay, or, or, or a board to pick in a poke? Well, uh, did you pay your 60 or 70 quid for your talk? Uh, did you do the research? Well, I, um, the problem is, if you've got portion liability, your house liability is 5 pounds 55, um, you just spend 60 quid. Then you basically, you've just given your insurance company 60 quid. But obviously, if not a portion liability you're sitting on, it's, uh, it's a, a, you know, you've done a good thing, really. Um, the problem is these chancel checks aren't particularly good. Uh, I have to say that. Um, they miss everything. They miss, I don't think they include in their search of merged land and time. No, but this is for life, for 60 quid, and no answer. Yeah, you, you pay your 60 quid. It's a question mark whether it only indemnifies you, it doesn't indemnify the person who buys it off you. But obviously, after, but after October the 13th, obviously, if you sell the land, it's not very good. Uh, if you sold it the following day, after October the 13th, the liability vanishes. And this is the big change on October the 13th. If the land is sold, the liability ends on that moment. So, yeah, a lot of people have a lot of chance of their liability. Mine only has 25 quid. Actually, I now know I wasted my money for the original liability in my houses. But then in those days, four, four years ago, this was a very academic exercise for me. Just a simple question on the earlier than the maps. We've got maps here with big areas out of the green, within which some areas are sort of out red. And we've also got, in the areas out of green, numbers in red, saying things like 17, etc. So another question, then there's red, red lettering within a green area, is, you know, what's the status of that? And does etc. is that short down the same numbers 12 to 21 inclusive? You really uh, have to go to the type, the portion that went with it to understand what they meant. So the map in there, we've got probably the best quality map from the, uh, because what they did, that the National Archive map, which is not the guy I've never seen before today, I would use the local archive. Um, when they, as the years went on between 19, 1836 and 1936, people sold them and changed things and they amended it on that map. But they didn't amend it on the local archive map. So those are the amendments over the years and those should marry up with the record of ascertainment. Actually, my national archive map has no amendments on it, obviously. Well, I, was, uh, I knew they existed, but I'd never been down to the national archive to see them. So those should marry up with the record of ascertainment but they will not marry up to the merger of land and time. They're all to do with, uh, if Mr. Smith sold a particular piece of land in 1920, he sold half the land to his next door, where, and that, then they split up the rent time charge. It's all to do with reorganisation. So that will marry up to a record of ascertainment precisely, but it will not marry up to the merger of land and time. Um, you'll need to sit there with your record of ascertainment. What all these colours mean, to be honest, I'm not too certain, and it will be different for each one of you, because it's a different person who's done it. So that's the problem with tiles and maps. Every, every single, you have to look at the uh, uh, annex that I've looked at, you just look at the map, but not the annex that supports it. Uh, but it's really good to have it, because um, 90, I don't think any diocese has actually given it to their, any parish. So, uh, other than Lincoln. So, I, mean, I can't say that Lincoln Diocese is probably the most helpful diocese I've come across. Uh, so, the, uh, you say you've been lacking the support, you need, to go to, you need to go to the four people of, I can't name the uh, diocese, because that would be, but, but they're very sad and very powerful. And so, I have to say, you're lucky to have this. It may well mean you have to go down to the National Archives, but it should cross reference with Rapid Assetainment really well. Which, which actually has done. 
because I will only use the lovely flower cards. So you're very fortunate. So the lovely flower cards have to make them marry together. Great. What's the potential downside to having Or, or do nothing? What's the, what's the ultimate downside? Well, theoretically, I'm only, this is only theoretical, the ultimate downside of opting to do nothing, which I think is, is the only thing that's really wrong, um, is that theoretically the PCC for the last 10 years is personally large. Uh, I think you can opt to do something and you do the basic bit of research and then write to the charity commissioners and say, as far as we're aware, there's no chance of repair liability, or there is, and it's not really worth it. And giving your outline of your reasons, and they agree with your reasons, we don't want to upset the whole family, whatever it is, or it's personally, what cost us more money to find it, then uh, I think that would be fair enough. I think the dollars would down is you're personally liable, and you're liable even after you've left the PCC, as are all the other PCC members for the last 10 years. Theoretically, I don't think it's happen, but I'm only using the theory. What? Um, to, to the charity for breach of trust. So, for instance, the chancel fell down, and it found out that you were even in negligent in carrying out your duties as a charity. Theoretically, you'll be liable for the upkeep of the chance because you failed to carry out your due diligence. I find it incredibly unlikely you'll ever get there. Um, also, it might mean because you failed to carry out your due diligence, certainly under the English heritage it will be true. Under, under the heritage it's less likely to be true. Under the English heritage um, you might find um, grants are completely inaccessible to you. Uh, but that English heritage, the heritage funds, can be a far more reasonable bunch, bunch, bunch of people. And that's mostly thanks to Peter Luff, to be honest. And so I think, when I was doing this presentation a year ago, it was all good. Um, I couldn't say there's any right spot in the horizon. Under theoretical bargaining, you could put together a possible case of reputational damage. Now I know you can do. And, uh, and so that's one of us to do it now, as opposed to this time last year, because you would be really depressed. You should have seen that people sat with me a year ago, and you thought you were grooming and confused, and they were. And they were very confused. Uh, why, why do you see the parishes have a record of ascertainment, and it's not? Re uh, some are record of because um, those who are record of ascertainment make those rent high charge. Um, in 1936. Still people were paying uh, money to various people at that time, on that date. And then they, uh, but those who don't, mean there was no rent high charge being paid in 1936. Mean, doesn't mean there's no liability, it just means there's no rent high charge liability. In many ways, I often think that those without a record of ascertainments are probably in a more gloomy, in a more difficult position because they've got harder research to do, in my opinion, in any way. Um, so what it means is no, all that means is there's no rent tight charge being paid in, um, in 1836 or in 1934, it's all paid off. Um, so that's all it means. Um, um, if you've clearly done, been involved in a lot of research with this, could you perhaps give us some idea of um, a timescales that we may, or if you like, the amount of time that you may expect to spend on research and also an approximate cost? For me personally, when I go to the cost, I mean, to be, some of you are asking me to do the research for you, it's probably cost you about 300 quid, if not more. And I can't guarantee how good they will be. Um, if you do it yourself, I've done one parish in 20 minutes because there was no liability. Um, uh, or I could just say all there is only liability is record of ascertainment liability. Um, and you just say, and then I report back to the PCC, it's only liability, that's outstanding. Um, or, you, or sometimes you say, it depends on the parish. To be honest, um, the research can be taken hours, hours, hours. This is how many townships you've got. If you've got 13 townships, like I've got, and you've got two suburbs, a township and a little bit parish, you could be, be forever. But if you've only got one parish with one township, you've only really got one issue. And so actually, it might not be that, but it depends 
But obviously, if you could theoretically have an enclosure on the wood, I know a lot of Lincoln have, and that could take a lot of time to work out where the land is. And that moment, if you can't find it yourself, like I know my layout earlier, or that particular one there, you can't do it as clearly as that. You might need a survivor to do it for your, your behalf. Um, it's quite easily done if you convert it to um, you know, onto, a, onto a computerized form. So, how long is a piece of string is really the answer to that. But I can tell you, sometimes it's not long at all, and other times it takes a long, long time. Particularly as the people have researched it, see, you've got this huge, great big tie map. Have you seen them? Yes. Massive tie maps. Pages of pages. That takes a long time to go through those. And then you get a little tie map, which is that big, and takes you just a five, ten minute glance through to, do, to make that brief assessment. And then, if you are doing the research, I highly recommend you take photographs if you don't know what art goes, because when you get home, you can't remember what you've done. And so, I often, I take a make of this, you take the photographs with me of everything I do, um, if, I'm, if I feel like it's more. So, we do, that's what we do, and then you can look at that home at your own leisure, as opposed to going backwards and forwards to the archives. But what would happen if there weren't to be PCC in office between now and um, basically, um, all, the, all those PCCs that could have made up their mind um, in the last 10 years would be personally liable. Um, you, you are, I mean, this is what I've been reading, because they have had 10 years to make the decision. So if you do a mass resignation now, which I know one PCC have opted to do, that's fine. It, it just absolves you of um, response, absolves you of any decision making powers, but it doesn't absolve you of responsibility. Because you've had 10 years to do it. Uh, 2003 is when, I don't know, most artists he sent letters around, I don't know when he did it here. Um, between 2003 to 2005, his letters went around saying, I know, in, I, I know in my diocese they certainly did. What happened was, in virtually every place, the, the, the vicar or the said, I oh, don't do me seven years in the future, and then Julie put it in the beat. And that happened. I think I've come across a diocese where the registrar didn't send the letter out. I've come across lots of places that have no recollection of the letter being sent out. Because when you do the Darson mailing for anything like me, who gets do you get Darson mailing here? Or Darson, and I think you'll probably find you do get a letter with probably somewhere between 2003 and 2005 saying you should do something about it. And in most diocese, on the faculty application, it says who is the lay rector. And so, uh, you've actually, um, you might say nobody told us. What probably happened is the vicar didn't tell you, or the PCC secretary said that's nothing to do with us. So you have been told, even if you have no recollection of being told. Um, or even, um, and you've all done it, you know, doesn't look very important to me. I'll talk about that in the next PCC. Any other business I'll with me, I'll go the path. So, uh, so I think, um, so you can't dog yourself, you're afraid you, there's no escape from responsibility. Um, but uh, I think, I mean, I think for all, all of you here, there'll be, I think, of the four, probably 200, 200 odd parishes where there are chance to repair liability issues, I would imagine 180 of you will find good reasons why not to put the liability onto whoever, whoever has the liability. And there'll probably be about 20 or so parishes and where, or, or, or where the church commissioners are there, who feel it's probably is reasonable for you to put the liability on the church commissioners, cause, um, or the water board, or the MOT. I think mean, for the vast, vast more, most of you, it'll be reputational damage, perhaps it'll cost too much. Um, but if you're going to go, go arguing for cost too much, you just have to put your figures together. You just have to face it figures how much it costs. But I think mixing the two together, reputation damage and financial cost, will, um, will, you know, will be the reason that most of you will go. But you have to formulate your own argument.